Hello and welcome back to more AEW on TEW 2020. We are here, the final show before Revolution. A great time to lose your muse for booking for a month. Uh, and yeah, we're starting off with some of the... I'm gonna rename it to the just the Tag Team Continental Classic. I'm, I kind of screwed up with having that, but oh well, it's fine. Uh, but yeah, the champions do win over Hiromu Takahashi and Drillistico. Uh, and Matt Hardy was on commentary for the match. He gets off and continues to taunt the tag champs. Says that they're just two guys who joined together while the Hardys are a legendary tag team. Real brothers that have worked together for decades. Ricky's not impressed by Matt's chatter. And there's a reason that they're honored with being able to pull double duty in both being the tag champs and being in the Continental Classic. Big Bill says they'll meet again tomorrow. And then it'll be in the ring. Uh, I feel like this is going to be like the most obvious... Uh, decision on the card. Who's going to win this one? It's the Hardy Boys versus Har 2024 Hardy Boys. Yeah. Otis Miro is backstage with Mike Bailey and CJ Perry watching footage of Bailey's trial match against Stu Grayson from two weeks ago. Miro says he's definitely impressed by Bailey's work. He thanks CJ for bringing him into the fold. He apologizes for doubting her, but before CJ can say anything in response, they are cut off by Kyle Fletcher. Kyle Fletcher says that Miro is still just a weirdo for, you know, all his religious talk and recruiting a disciple, and he's honestly just disappointed in Speedball for agreeing to all of this. And Speedball defends his position. He says that, you know, Miro is, you know, one of the best wrestlers of our day, and that Fletcher wouldn't stand a chance against him. And he's kind of like looking over to Miro for a response. But Miro is locked on eyes with powerhouse Hobbs. Uh, Hobbs is off camera next to Fletcher. Uh, just, you know, little camera trick. Uh, and Fletcher gets the idea to just have a tag team match between the two of them before walking off. Hobbs keeps his stern on a little bit longer before following suit. So yeah, trying to keep some storylines going past the pay-per-view. Uh, it's something I am not usually that good at. Also, not good at go-home shows. It's not a good go-home show. Uh, after this... Yeah. Uh, the Gates of Agony defeat the Righteous. Toa Leona pins Dutch. Yeah. I mean... What do you expect? Painful Heavens and he splits good with Adam Page, jumping Swerve backstage. He's beating him down. And he's joined by Brian Keith. Eventually, Keith takes over the main beatdown as the GOA are rushing out to go and help out Swerve. Uh, Hangman, he says that, you know, saying into the camera that he's not just going to let Swerve off easy. They've already fought each other. They've bled before. They've tried to tear each other apart before. But now it's time that we actually do this. That we actually go in there and we put our bodies fully on the line in an exploding barbed wire deathmatch. I, you, I feel like you kind of need to escalate beyond where they had before, which is very difficult, considering that match, but, yeah. Uh, this will definitely be a match that'll be skipped by a lot of people, uh, but oh well. The Righteous are walking backstage, and they're stopped by Jake Roberts calling them out. Because I'm not their people who do have a vision towards the future of AEW. And Jake wants to help them achieve that. Just the, the Righteous, you just need to trust me. And I'll guide you to the promised land. And the Righteous, they agree to the proposition. So, Jake Roberts joining the Righteous. Uh, of course, Jake Roberts was paired up with Lance Archer. Lance Archer, bad chemistry, however. Uh, and I feel like he could do decently with the Righteous. I know very little about the Righteous, but they seem like an interesting gimmick. Out of this, Richard Holiday pins Billy Gunn. Uh, really outperformed him. Holiday is cocky in his pin following the match, but he's quickly stopped by the acclaimed getting into the ring. Holiday scurries off. Uh, Hammerstone and Tankman, they make their way out. Like, it's, the music's still playing from Holiday's win, and they're getting out for their upcoming tag team Continental Classic match, but they have mics in their hands. Both of them, they're talking shit to the acclaimed, saying that all that they're able to do is make crappy rhymes, be controversial on Twitter, and have a stupid, asinine, little young, uh... There's a word I'm looking for right now, but I can't... 
think of it. Whatever. Um, yeah, I don't, they're they're making a childish joke. Or if you're Anthony Bowens, you do absolutely nothing. Part of the team, you know, Alex Hammerstone. He's buffer. Take man stronger. Holidays hotter. All three of us, the Dynasty Marketing Incorporated, were the greatest example of perfection in AEW. Uh, the two members of the DMI get into the ring as the acclaimed leave. Richard Holiday heads to the back. And the Lucha Bros come out and actually lose to Tankman and Hammerstone. Yeah, a bit surprising that you have this result in there. But Tankman and Hammerstone, they pick up the win. I believe, yep. Yeah. Uh, insult is added to injury for the Death Triangle as the Tron soon lights up and shows Chris Bay holding the phone in a selfie-style video. This Phoenix, Penta, glad to see you. See a lost your match, but that's just a damn shame, ain't it? And the whole Continental Classic is barring people at rings that really sucks for you, cause kind of like moves the camera a little bit. He kind of like steps out of the way, moves the camera, shows that Jay White and Ace Austin are beating down Pac. Jay White's kind of more just yelling at him as Ace is delivering the occasional boot, um, and he's, you know, Ace is still talking shit as well, uh, and Bay, he says that Jay White has something to say, Jay takes the camera, Chris Bay joins in as well in the background, and Jay says, I think, I recognize that you have been, uh, been together for four years now, to have a long time in pro wrestling, Bullet Club knows, because we've stand the test of time, well, Death Triangle, you've been sputtering for four years, so I think we gotta put the old dogs out of their misery. Is that an Aussie accent? No. Well, okay, that one was kind of more, but yeah. Uh, it is heel versus heel, but we just have way too many heels, so we will get some heel versus heel. So, oh well. After this, hmm. Christian Cage is seen in his still-ruined home, full with his many braces and casting. So since Tony Khan is a reckless man that won't let his talent properly heal before setting them off to a dangerous match with an even more dangerous man like Adam Copeland, I guess you might consider this a potential final farewell to the career of a legend like Christian Cage if they're allowed to have their way. Adam Copeland is a menace to society, invading the home of an innocent family like my own, and for that, I'm gonna use every ounce of my broken and battered body to take him out. And he, he tries to stand up and, you know, he's, he's acting all pain. Nick Wayne, Killswitch, like, no, 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 S sit down, sit down. You don't need to do this, save your energy. And Christian, because if you win, Copeland, you know this because you assaulted me. You injured me before I could take you down for real. And just getting a few final things in there. Uh, speaking of, we get a triple threat between the other members of the TBS ladder match. Uh, as Sky Blue picks up the win, pins Soraya with a sliced bread. Uh, she was the lowest performer, but oh well. Uh, Julia Hart was on commentary for the match, which means that she sat at the desk and said nothing, all while holding the belt. After Sky Blue gets up following the pinfall, Julia also gets up, gets to the center of the ramp, looks up, holds her title before a smile comes onto her face, and she walks off. After this, it would go over the entire card, which I'm going to go off of that off of memory. I might be missing some. So you have Kazuchi Okada versus Samoa Joe in the AEW World title match. You will have TNT Championship in the Hardcore Cell match uh, with Adam Copeland versus Christian Cage. TBS title, Julia Hart, Sky Blue, Soraya, and Trinity in a ladder match for the title. We have Chris Statlander versus uh, Tony, Timeless Tony Storm in a, basically it's going to be a backlot brawl. Uh, it's going to be a cinematic match. We have Adam Page versus Swerve Strickland. In an exploding barbed wire deathmatch. Yay. Uh, we have... Ah, oh shit. What's the Continental match? Uh, I believe the Continental match is Eddie Kingston. I think it's just Eddie versus Mustafa Ali. Might be missing some in there. I'll have to recheck my, all of my booking in the past. Uh, then you have the International title, which is Orange Cassidy versus... Oh shit, who's this one? Um, I cannot remember who 
is in the international title match. Uh, I think Roosh is. No, Roosh is going after Continental eventually. I don't remember who's in the international match, but again, we'll have that figured out later. Uh, tag team match. The Hardy Boys versus Ricky Starks and Big Bill. And then we also have uh, Sting and Darby Allen versus Will Osprey and Jonathan Gresham. And I think that's the card. Again, I'm remembering off the top of my head, I'll, and I haven't booked in like a month, at least. Uh, so, I'm definitely missing some, but it's fine. I'll have it all during my revolution. Main event, Moxley defeats Daniel Garcia. I really wish that was a little bit better. Um, Max deserves better color, color commentary. What I think I'm going to end up doing is, uh, after Revolution, I might just buff up all my commentary team ratings to really high, because who really cares about the color commentary rating? Come on. Uh, Moxley pops up after the match, he yells for Mike, even through some staggered breaths. He says, Adam Cole, you listen up, and you better goddamn listen well. I don't care what problems you have with Max, I don't care what problems you have with anyone else. You've messed with me, and I'm not just gonna let that through. You've already set your muscle on me, and I'm not just gonna let that slide again. I know your damn leg's broken, your ankle's broken, but mark my words, I will have your neck when you finally hear. I swear that, and he's interrupted by Roddy Strong and the Kingdom jumping him. They're beating him down. Or Adam wheels out onto the ramp, accompanied by Wardlow. He says, John, I don't think you're in the position to make that choice. The devil's got all the sway, and I didn't want you. I suppose I could be convinced to finally put you down, put you to pasture. The show ends with the kingdom standing tall over John Moxley. Uh, does not really, doesn't count for anything on the pay-per-view, but again, it's still building up things. I'm be very bad at go-home shows. Uh, obviously, I barely moved anything ahead. But yeah, uh, next episode, and tomorrow in game, is Revolution. So yeah, until then, uh, yeah, that'll just be, that'll be the next show.